Hi guys, eating my gari, which is yoka, cracker, and the peanut butter. Very good, but it's called gari. Um, you know what? I always ask myself this question. What is it about my energy, about my frequency that attracts certain people in my life? When I look back and analyze, um, the majority of people that I've met, they have one thing in common. And it doesn't matter if it's male or female. Um, yeah. And let's say seven times out of ten, it ends in problems because of jealousy and obsession. Guys, you would not believe it. And I know there are women out there, you know, that will understand what I am talking about. I am the type of person I just love, you know, now I try to, you know, um, I am more careful, but at first I did not know any better and I'm just loving people and loving people and people just writing script. What I mean by writing script is like they're creating scenes. They're creating scenes about me being with them and that kind of spirit, that obsessive spirit, that's demonic spirit. Can put you in danger every time. Yes, I have a story for you of one particular. Let me see which one should I talk about. Should I talk about the one in New York or should I talk about the one in Benin, West Africa? My God, people that you are friends with, people that you admire, and you don't see anything wrong with that. They act like they are your friend. You believe they are your friend. In the meanwhile, they are obsessed. And they are blocking you from meeting anybody else. By telling other people that you belong to them. By telling other people that you are their woman. Yes. So if anybody else is interested in you, they block it. But you don't even know what's going on. You don't even know that you are in an obsession movie. You just being you. You just loving and being the friend that you are, not you, not knowing that you've already been set up. Only God can get you out of that because that spirit can kill you. Obsession. Now, let me clarify the kind of obsession that I'm talking about. I am not talking about somebody you are dating. You are not dating this person. You do not have any other kind of feeling for this person but friendship. And you admire this person. It happens many times, but I'm going to take this example. Because I think I'll tell the one in New York. Because the one in West Africa, in Benin, is off the wall. This is going to need to be on another video. But it is so wicked. So, so, so wicked. That, uh... This is something I will have to think about and, and arrange it. But uh, the one in New York. And it, but it's the same pattern. You know, the signs of obsession. Personally, I didn't see anything. I was a good friend and I thought that he was a good friend. It happens with females too. But I'm talking about the, the one particular male right now. You know, and you think it's a good friend. You understand? It's like, hey, if I have a dollar, you have 50 cents. That kind of friend. Not knowing. There's a whole new thing. Not new thing. There's a whole different thing happening behind the scene that you know nothing about. Things that are being said about you. Things that are being arranged, you know, in your name. You understand? And you know, hey, going about your business, which you don't know, they say, don't hurt you. Until one day. Oh, God is good. God is good. Until one day, God opens the door and bring people in your path to help open your eyes so you can see in what danger you are in with the person you admire, with the person you respect, with the person that you think that is an excellent friend. 
so guys i'm gonna leave some stuff out but here's the picture someone you will admire like i already said i want i needed to um i needed a roommate and so this person referred his friend so it is through this 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 friend that i was able not only to open my eyes but save my own life yes again my page is public and i got witnesses so and um lord 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 where do i start where do i start by these people being in the home with me and analyzing me and seeing the way that i live my life that's how they knew i was not the person that this person has been describing to everybody Fine is you know god will cause your enemies to make mistakes okay they will make mistakes and it's in that mistake you will find out what the truth is so in my case the mistake was he referred me to people he was talking bad about me too when i say talking bad about me you know like like things that are not true things that he made up in his mind you understand like you know how people want um people that they can't have or they want what they cannot have but on my side that was never the case because that's a friend i didn't know there was something to have or not to have so oh my god i remember one time and he was a person that was in need and um he needed a phone. My father had an extra phone. So I got the phone and I let him use it. And that also used as evidence of how I wanted him. How, you know, I'm his woman. How Look at this. I'm keeping track on him. That's why I gave him a phone. But he did not tell. It's because he needed a phone so he can go to work and get in touch, you know, and stuff. And then I was helping Okay, so the scenario was changed to the point where I was the one who wanted him so bad and that I wanted to keep track on him. So I give him a phone. So anyway, to go back forward in the apartment after I was being, I guess, watched and, and analyzed secretly and found out that, wait a minute. How can she be like this person described when we in this house with her? Nobody's ringing her bell. Nobody's calling her. Nobody's coming in and out of her house. She's always in front of the computer. She's writing. She's doing her stuff. So what they were describing of her and what we are seeing every day is not the same thing. And that's when the people started telling me what was happening. Now, I'm the type of person I never really went out. And now my new um roommates you know, I saying, you know, let's go out. You got to go out, get out the house. Da, 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 da. I say, okay, I'll go out. Now that I'm going out, this person's uh, obsession is coming out more and more because that person knew my pattern. The person knew it was work, church, home. And now I'm going out. So now this person is going out to spy on me, which I didn't know. Until one day, Lord, one day I'm sitting down in the VIP section at this very famous place in Queens. And so I forgot to say this. While I started going out and he was going out to spy on me, which I didn't know about. And uh, of course, I didn't go out all the time. So he would keep going. So there were times but he knew I didn't know. Okay, so when I didn't go, my friend, my roommate would tell me so and so and so was there. They spotted him. And I'm like, hmm, okay. Well, being that he was my friend, you know, or I thought he was still a friend, that's not a person that always used to go out. Also, unless it, he was playing. You understand? He was playing in a band or whatever. So uh, that's how I knew I was, you know, he was going out now. You know to spy because i'm going out but um i didn't think it was that bad i didn't think it was going to get dangerous or anything like that but anyway so you know 
But that day when I did go out, when I was in the VIP section and I was sitting with the other artists, you know, the and, 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 and he walked up. He walked in the place. Now the, 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 the band, the, the person that was one of the musicians of the band called out my name. And I understood when they call out my name because now it became a joke. Everybody knew except for me, you know, of all the lies that was going up, all the script I was writing on my back. So when he called my name, I felt like it was kind of, hmm, okay. So that's me. He's in the building. Okay. So I'm sitting in the VIP section. Um, and all of a sudden this person walked to where we were. And he was like, where have you been? I've been calling you. He was, so it's like God, God was like, stay calm, stay calm. And I was like, okay, well, what is it that you want? I'm right here. What you want? And then he said, oh, uh, see, he knows me. We've been friends for so long. Okay. So my regular reaction would have been like, what the heck you looking at for, you looking you, you looking for me for? What is it that you want? But I wasn't like that. I wasn't hyper. I wasn't mean. I wasn't, you know, like uh surprising or anything like that. I say, okay, so what is it? That messed up his spirit, that messed up his assignment. And then he said, uh uh um uh, um oh, you know that camera that you know you borrowed from me? Uh I was calling. I needed that camera. I said, okay. So when do you want it? Just come by and get it. He wasn't expecting that calm uh, um, uh, answer. He came for war. He came for blood. And everybody's looking. So now he's embarrassed and he's more upset. Okay. You know, let me help um, someone understand what I'm trying to say. Um, there's a way that is acceptable to society where they feel like, okay, when you with a man, he's allowed to talk to you any kind of way, you know, he's allowed to do whatever he wants to do to you, which is not right. So that night was a moment of truth where all them people, he was telling stuff to me because at that time I was of course single. I live by myself. Like I said, that's why I needed a roommate. So all the, all the guys, I mean, you know, I, I was, I was popular, you know, my works, you know, coming out, you know, publishing the paper and stuff like that. You know, I write music. I do a lot of stuff. So, um, I was popular and a lot of guys had their eyes on me and he will make sure that he tells all of them that when they were, cause they know he, we were friends. So they would ask him about me. He was like, Oh, does she have a man? We you know that. Da, 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 da. So he would tell them, yeah, you know, he would let them know that he is the one, but not let me know, <laughs> not let me know. So he was like just blocking and blocking and blocking. And you know, even though some of them knew he was lying, but there were no way to prove that he was lying because you know, a lot of time, if, when we do go to a restaurant or whatever, cause he was my friend. So that was the night of truth where, like I said, um, all these people, and we talk about a lot of artists, all these talented people, you know, all these musicians. And, and so it's not just only regular people, you know what I mean? So, um, so now all these people, you know, looking, and that's why he came with such rage because he got to prove his manhood over his woman. And the thing is, I didn't know that I was, and that's why God told me to stay calm. I hope that helps understand the story. And so by my calmness, the way I answered, it's like he was ashamed and everybody was looking and then he turned around. So of course now he got to get me to pay for what happened. He got to make, you know, make me pay another way. So, okay. I, he left and then my roommates was like, so you see, you see what I was saying? So they start telling me, they start telling me, they start telling me. I was so shocked. And then I started to remember when I was in Benin, West Africa, that this Marabu, if you guys don't know what Marabu is, it's an Islamic voodoo man. Okay. I was sitting down in the car um, in Cotonou. When this man came up to me and he was telling me that there was somebody that was doing all kind of witchcraft, that was doing all kind of stuff on me. You understand? But I did not believe it because I didn't know I had enemies. I didn't know, you know, I was like, okay, I told the guy, okay, if you see somebody doing something, you know, against me, 
Can you please give them a message? And so basically the guy was telling me that I kind of like, I didn't believe it or I didn't care. You understand? Like I said, I didn't know I have enemies and I just, I don't know. I just didn't believe it. So, and he wanted me to know that he was telling me the truth, that he was a true seer. And that he told me something about every woman in my family, something that only us know. You understand? And when he said that, I was shocked, but I didn't show him that I was shocked. So I stay calm. Again, I stay calm. And I was like, you know what? Do you have any kids? He said, yeah. And so I reached down and I took, I had a block of money that I had changed from dollar to francs CFA, the, 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 the the, the currency of most countries in West Africa. And I say here, I didn't even count it. I say here, this is for you, for your children, you know? And, and he was looking at me and he was like, what kind of woman is this? He was the, the look in his face. And he was like, um, so that's it. I say, yeah, tell the person who's doing me evil to add more because they can't do me anything. I said, I have God over me. So I don't care who's doing, who's doing what. And he makes sure he gave me every details of who's doing that. But he told me it was a woman. He didn't tell me it was a man. Okay. So that's why I was like, you know what? Here, here for your children. Have a blessed day. Okay. And I left it like that. But when I go forward now and think, okay, when I came back to the U S and I'm thinking this man this man that is obsessed with me had already gotten married. And one day he had said to me, you know, my wife carries your picture everywhere she goes. I felt that was kind of odd. Why would his wife carry him? First of all, I said, oh, you, because I thought we were still friends. I said, you got married. You didn't tell me. I, you know, I, I, you, I was not invited to the wedding and stuff like that. And then I said, like, well, why would your wife be carrying my picture around? And then he said this to me. He said, but the voodoo man told her if she don't leave that girl alone, he didn't say my name. Huh? He said, if she don't leave that girl alone, that has nothing to do with her man. If she don't leave her alone, she's the one that's going to die. And then a light came on in my head because of his obsession. This woman thought that me and him also were together. So she took my picture to do voodoo on me. You see that? And then God used him. To let it out. I would have never known. Okay. So here she is. She's doing her voodoo. And then it comes to find out that, you know, he had a son and everything. And, you know, I had mentioned that, oh my God, you know, as close that we were, you have a child and I don't know about it. That about. Yep. And so when he was able, one day he was able to, um, um, bring his son over so I can meet the child. And the moment the child walked into my place. The child start yelling, Daddy, it's right here. Daddy, it's right here. Daddy, it's right here. I was the one that was in the dark. I was the one that did not know what was going on. You know, when you live your life, you understand not hurting people. You just doing you. You respect God. You know, and people just saying stuff about you, doing stuff about you that you know nothing about. Only God can reveal these things. And so, like I said, I didn't know I had enemies. The Marabu in West Africa described this woman to the T. I've never met her before. So I didn't know. That's why I didn't really believe it. He was like a dark skinned woman. Da, 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 da. I, I really don't have friends. I know a lot of people, but I don't have friends. I don't have anybody that close to me you know, that will, that I know that will want my death or anything like that. Okay. So come to find out the child was acting like that. The child is innocent and the child could see the child was acting like that in my place. As soon as she, and en he entered my place is because he saw whatever his mom and the voodoo guy sent towards me. And I live in that place. I'm not guilty of anything. So I'm living my life like nothing. I have nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be scared of. I'm just living my life. But when the child came inside my dwelling, the child was in the reflection of what his mother was doing to me. And so the child wanted to go home. The child was, I think, was five years old. Some of you don't know the spiritual world. It's no joke. And here I am totally innocent. 
Okay, some people are obsessed with you. They will poison you. Some people are obsessed with you. They will shoot you. Some people will obsessed with you. They will go the voodoo route. You know, um, it's very hard to take the story because so many things happen and it's, it's and it's like being friends with somebody for so many years. It's not something that happened overnight. So trying to get some parts, you know, and to tell it, it's not easy because so many things happen, which I was totally blind to. And even after he referred me these people to come live with me, he quickly tried to change his mind because he realized that by me dwelling in the house, living in the house with the people that he's, he's lying to about me, they will find out the truth. And that's how I found out the truth. When someone is obsessed with you, the spirit of obsession is deadly, is demonic. But make sure you're always innocent and make sure your faith is st strong with the Lord because only you can get you out. So you see, pretenders can kill you. Fake friends can kill you. Okay. Only God can get you out from the hands of witchcraft sorcery all these satanic um nonsense you understand but the best part of it is you you have to be innocent you have to let god fight for you and god will fight for you because you're innocent you understand? So when you read, touch not my anointing, do my prophet no harm, don't think they, they, they're just words. Okay? If you out there doing witchcraft, if you out there doing all kind of nonsense, just like they are, do you actually think God is going to fight for you? Do you think God, you know, going to say, don't touch my anointed? No. Because you are the same. Evil begets evil. You understand what I'm saying? I know in the natural, some people, especially mothers, when their children doing wrong, you know, they know the child did it, but they go and defend the child and say, oh, no, my, not my child. You know, good, well, your child is a serial killer. Knowing good, well, your child is a rapist. Knowing good, well, your child is doing this and doing that, and you will defend that child. Well, God is not that type of God, the God that I serve. And so, you know, um, yes, God dispatched his angels on the battlefield, on my behalf, because you have one man that is obsessed with me, that have everybody thinking that I belong to him. You have his wife who is obsessed with the fact that her husband is obsessed with me. And the only way that she saw that she could take me out is by killing me through voodoo, which did not work. And that's just a part of the story. It's a whole lot to it. But his was so interesting. Whatever the mother did against me, look how it's her child who was able to see all that. It's her child who was terrorized with whatever spirit that she sent my way. It's her child that couldn't stay in my house. I love kids. I was so happy to see the, the, the kid. But he couldn't stay. He, all he was doing was screaming and telling, Daddy, Daddy, it's right here. It's right here. And Daddy already know because Daddy let the cat out the bag by saying, My wife takes your picture out everywhere with her. But the voodoo man told her, If you don't leave her alone, you are the one that will die. So the death sentence that she put out on me, was ready to be reversed on her and that's how i again this video could be so long so i have to like you know shorten it um but before i go it is important to understand touch not my anointed do my prophet no harm now i know a lot of people love this verse you understand and a lot of people claim to be anointed but not everybody's anointed you understand? God gives specific instructions, you know, that reveals people who are anointed. People who are anointed, you know, are not, um, uh, are the people that are set apart. You know how he said many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Chosen to do what? And the ones that are called, call for what? 
So we don't have the same mission. We don't have the same purpose. And we are not on the same spiritual level. And so regardless of what spiritual level you are in, okay, once you are innocent, once you are about your father's business, whether you know exactly what the purpose is, you understand, it does not matter. Once your heart is clean, all that sorcery, all that voodoo, witchcraft, and all that stuff, your heart is clean, and you are covered by the Lord, and he will fight your battles. Yes, he will. And so, um, I, I have not seen this man in so long, but it did not stop there. He continued because now it's not only just obsession, it was revenge, okay, by me, based on my action, calling him out and showing that he was a liar and he was obsessed. And of course, he was he became also enemies of um, the people whom he sent my way so I can rent the, the place to. And, you know, um, to all liars out there, to people who like to create scenes on people behind people's back, you know, you might think you're winning because you have the crowd full, but everybody, you cannot fool any, everybody. And when God rise, okay, you must scatter and you will scatter. All powers in his hand. You think you are doing something. You think you are um, doing great arms to his chosen few. But the last laugh is going to be on you. So this is the time to change and be set apart yourself and come in harmony with God. Accept God and change. Stop laughing. And even like on social media, you know, some people don't understand. You also have virtual demons. You always, you are, you have people that's hating on you, people who know you and people who don't even know you. When I say know you, do they really know you? No. So bottom line is the same. They don't really know the you, you, but they following you. They spying on you. They tracking you for what purpose? It's like, um, just like I always talk about blood suckers or mosquitoes or termites or vultures and stuff like that that's how, that's what they are to your energy they want to eat up your energy that's why they stick up to you you understand they want to suck up your blessings they want to they, they just want to take everything that you have you understand and some of them is to the point where it's not personal that's just the, the way they are and that's what witchcraft is. A witch will suck the life out of you. A, the witch is there for your breath, for your life. You understand? And some of us, because we are so nice and so welcoming, we the one opening the door for the witch. Suffer no witch to live. You see how the word is true? There's a remedy in the Bible for every situation. Suffer no witch to live. But... You have to go back to basic. You have to get the knowledge so you can be able to identify the witch in men or in women. You understand? They're following you around for a purpose. They stick to you um, like magnet for a purpose. And if you know the true definition of love, and if you can really identify love, then you will know that it's not love. And don't always think that it's in a stranger. Because just like charity starts at home, the curse starts at home too. That's where generational curse came from. So your family, your sister, brother, sister, you know, um, it could be mother or father. Why well, some of them can't stand you. Why? Is that same energy sucking? Is that same jealousy? Is that same devil? I love you.
And even like on social media, you know, some people don't understand. You also have virtual demons. You always, you are, you have people that's hating on you, people who know you and people who don't even know you. When I say know you, do they really know you? No. So bottom line is the same. They don't really know the you you, but they following you, they spying on you, they tracking you. For what purpose? It's like, um, just like I always talk about blood suckers, or mosquitoes, or termites, or vultures and stuff like that. That's how, that's what they are to your energy. They want to eat up your energy. That's why they stick up to you. You understand? They want to suck up your blessings. They want to. They they just want to take everything that you have. You understand? And some of them is to the point where it's not personal. That's just the the way they are. And that's what witchcraft is. A witch will suck the life out of you. A, the witch is there for your breath, for your life. You understand? And some of us, because we are so nice and so welcoming, we the one opening the door for the witch. Suffer no witch to live. You see how the word is true? There's a remedy in the Bible for every situation. Suffer no witch to live. But you have to go back to basic. You have to get the knowledge so you can be able to identify the witch in men or in women. You understand? They're following you around for a purpose. They stick to you um, like magnet for a purpose. And if you know the true definition of love, and if you can really identify love, then you will know that it's not love. And don't always think that it's in a stranger. Because just like charity starts at home, the curse starts at home too. That's where generational curse came from. So your family, your sister, brother, sister, you know, um, it could be mother or father. Why well, some of them can't stand you why is that same energy sucking is that same jealousy is that same devil i love you So, the problem is not only with the action, but with the reaction. How do you react? And also, one more point is, the, that particular guy who was following me around, it's not when I was told about it or when I discovered it that it started. He's been following me around. He's been popping up. You understand? And he's not the only one. That's the thing. I've met so many. You understand? But um, it's been happening. So, and God kept me covered. So, for you out there, do you know how many times God keep you covered? You understand? He keeps you covered and uh, because only he can see. What is happening in the in the in the spirit, you know, um, the plans that the enemy, you know, um, have for you? Only God can see it, and only God can block it. So you going around your business, you taking your day for granted, you know, you taking your life for granted, you know, without acknowledging that Abba is. On your side Abba is covering you if that's not grace if that's not mercy is that not if that's not love I don't know what it is and you don't have to tell me because I don't want to know anything else because that I know that's what it is
And so, like all the other videos that I've done, if you have watched so far, you will see that everything flows into um, the next one and the next one and the next one. So basically, when you're looking at all the issues that I'm, you know, underlying that I'm talking about, the chain. That's why that was the voice of God who told me. When I kept praying, family don't do da, 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 da. God said, you have to change. And it, 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 it fits. Because no matter what others are doing, you have to change. And I had to change. I had to stop doubting and making excuses for their actions. And I had to take my power and authority and say, no. You see how simple it is? No, I'm not going to take it anymore. No. I don't care what you do. Do your voodoo. Do your hoodoo. Do your gri gri. Because that's what it's called in some of the African countries. Do your gri gri. Do your obia. Do your kodombre. Go do whatever you want. No. No. You cannot have access to me. No. Stop annoying me. Stop asking me questions. I'm pretty much a public figure. Whatever you want to know, read about it. And leave me alone. I don't owe you anything. And that message goes to anybody who's trying to take the upper hand over your life. Period. You know, this is like a side note. Do you know that people will stick to you um, like a magnet? Meanwhile, they have not even one ounce of love for you. Good morning. You know what I mean? So, don't get it twisted. Just because somebody's around you does not mean the person loves you. And you know there are signs to... To know the difference between someone caring for you and someone being obsessed with you, okay? Because back then, I was very naive. I didn't know. And I didn't put my myself first, you know? So, I thought that when somebody, even though I was annoyed, when somebody would call and be like, Where are you? Where are you? You think that, you know, it's caring, but it's not. Why is anybody monitoring your movement? Aren't you free to move to go wherever you want? And especially if it's like just a friend. You see what I'm saying? So that's the kind of spirit that um, was always around me. And then I would question myself. Why is this person so focused on me? And I kept meeting those kind of people. You understand? Oh, you know, and then, and then I will make excuse. Well, you know, it's just being caring. Or it's just being a good friend. Or it's just being that. No. People popping up. You understand? And that's 
that's why I had to um um unplug my doorbell because I don't tolerate people stopping by. You understand? Without my permission. And I do not tolerate people asking me questions. Where you been? Where you going? Where you, where you, where you? As if I have to know everything that I do. You understand? There is no one on earth deserving of noting my movement. Only God is. You understand? Only God. So, people popping up unannounced. You know, people calling all kind, thinking they can call any time of, of the night. So I would, you know, change my number in a heartbeat or just, you know, unhook the phone. You know, I mean, I would take my power. I would use my power. I would do whatever I have to do to send the message. But it doesn't mean that it did not annoy me. Why should I have to do that? You see what I'm saying? But in my heart, I would make excuses. Well, maybe I'm being so, you know, difficult. Maybe I'm being this. And like I said in many of my videos, doubt. Keep doubt out of your life. Because every time you doubt, the devil will score. You know, this is like a side note. Do you know that people will stick to you um, like a magnet? Meanwhile, they have not even one ounce of love for you. Good morning. You know what I mean? So, don't get it twisted. Just because somebody's around you does not mean the person loves you. And you know there are signs to to know the difference between someone caring for you and someone being obsessed with you, okay? Because back then, I was very naive. I didn't know, and I didn't put my myself first, you know? So I thought that when somebody, even though I was annoyed, when somebody would call and be like, where are you? Where are you? You think that, you know, it's caring, but it's not. Why is anybody monitoring your movement? Aren't you free to move, to go wherever you want? And especially if it's like just a friend. You see what I'm saying? So that's the kind of spirit that um, was always around me. And then I would question myself. Why is this person so focused on me? And I kept meeting those kind of people. You understand? Oh, you know, and, and then I will make excuse. Well, you know, it's just being caring. Or it's just being a good friend. Or it's just being that. No. People popping up. You understand? And that's that's why I had to um um unplug my doorbell. Because I don't tolerate people stopping by. You understand? Without my permission. And I do not tolerate people asking me questions. Where you been? Where you going? Where you, where you, where you, where you? As if I have to know everything that I do. You understand? There is no one on earth deserving of noting my movement. Only God is. You understand? Only God. So, people popping up unannounced. You know, people calling all kind, thinking they can call any time of, of the night. So I would, you know, change my number in a heartbeat or just, you know, unhook the phone. You know, I mean, I would take my power. I would use my power. I would do whatever I have to do to send the message. But it doesn't mean that it did not annoy me. Why should I have to do that? You see what I'm saying? But in my heart, I would make excuses. Well, maybe I'm being so, you know, difficult. Maybe I'm being this. And like I said in many of my videos, doubt. Keep doubt out of your life. Because every time you doubt, the devil will score.
Just because somebody's around you does not mean the person knows you. And you know there are signs to to know the difference between someone caring for you and someone being obsessed with you. Okay? Because back then, I was very naive. I didn't know. And I didn't put my myself first. You know? So, I thought that when somebody, even though I was annoyed, when somebody would call and be like, where are you? Where are you? You think that, you know, it's caring, but it's not. Why is anybody monitoring your movement? Aren't you free to move, to go wherever you want? And especially if it's like just a friend. You see what I'm saying? So that's the kind of spirit that um, was always around me. And then I would question myself, why is this person so focused on me? And I kept meeting those kind of people. You understand? Oh, you know, and, and then I would make an excuse. Well, you know, they're just being caring. Or they're just being a good friend. Or they're just being that. No. People popping up. You understand? And that's, that's why I, I had to... Um, um, Unplug my doorbell because I don't tolerate people stopping by. You understand? Without my permission. And I do not tolerate people asking me questions. Where you been? Where you going? Where you, where you, where you? As if I have to know everything that I do. You understand? There is no one on earth deserving of noting my movement. Only God is. You understand? Oh my God. So, people popping up, unannounced, you know, people calling all kind of, thinking they can call any time of, of the night. So I would, you know, change my number in a heartbeat or just, you know, unhook the phone. You know, I mean, I would take my power. I would use my power. I would do whatever I have to do to send the message. But it doesn't mean that it did not annoy me. Why should I have to do that? You see what I'm saying? But in my heart, I would make excuses. Well, maybe I'm being so, you know, difficult. Maybe I'm being this. And like I said in many of my videos, doubt. Keep doubt out of your life. Because every time you doubt, the devil will score.